Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, we are going to be talking about the new Sword Soul card. Yes, there are technically more, but this is the only one worth playing. Kishing Longwan. This card is pretty crazy, and it is another level 10 that you can end on if you also, er, er, instead of going into Baron, or with Baron. Uh, I'm going to talk to, uh, or I'm going to talk about how you can do that as well as the benefits of this card over something like Baron. So first of all, if this, uh, if you synchro summon another, another worm monster while this monster is on the field, you can draw a card. Also, if your opponent special summons a monster, you can banish one of those monsters and if you do, inflict 1200 damage to your opponent. Also, when an opponent activates a spell or trap or a spell trap card or effect, you can banish that card and inflict 1200. This is really good against two things in particular. One, field spells, and two, adventure, uh, or just anything that's like continuous. Um, so yeah, having that additional effect to just get it out of there is super nice. Also, just being able to banish one of your opponent's monsters is also very nice. Also, cumulatively throughout the long one burn as well as this guy's burn that is 3600 damage which means all you have to do is deal 4400 damage which is super easy in the current meta uh so yeah just like any two monsters uh which including this guy basically gets you to uh lethal so let's hop into these duels and let me show you how this deck performs actually let's do the quick card by card first of all we have the Tenyi package, this is obviously Tenyi Sword Soul, ruining Triple Adhara, one Shathana, double Vashada, and Triple Ashana. Pretty standard there. As for the Sword Souls, we are running the Triple Moye, double Taya, double Ecclesia, and the Triple Long One. Again, pretty standard. We're also running the one Arch Nemesis Protoss, because this card is absolutely broken busted. As for the rest of the cards, we're running Triple Emergence, one Sacred Summit, because it is just so very useful, and it brings up a lot of various different plays that you can utilize with it. We're also running, of course, the one Blackout. Uh, as for the rest of the cards, I am running Heavenly Dragon Circle. This card is to help dodge things like Imperm or what have you. Uh, it's just a good card overall, and uh, it allows you to just continue your plays and uh, add additional follow-up. As for the hand, or sorry, we're also running one Deskbot 001 because we are playing the Auroradon, and this just happens to be the target for it. Um, anyway, moving on, we are also running a whole bunch of hand traps. We're running the two Maxi, the triple Ash Blossom, and the two Imperm, as well as the one Nibiru to draw off of the Max C. And then, of course, the two Called By and the one Cross Out. That's it for the main deck. As for the extra deck, we're running the one Yazi, the double Baxia, the one Draco Berserker, the double Chi Chow, the one Chow Fang, the one uh, Baron, the one Sovereign, or what is this one? Cheng Ying. The one Kishing Long One, the Double Monk, one Christian Huck, Vibrax, one Shaman, and one Aurora Don. So that's it for the deck. Let's hop into the replays and see how this deck performs. Before we get on to the rest of the video, did you know that 70% of the people who watch my content aren't subscribed? If you end up liking the content, consider subscribing. You can always unsubscribe later if you end up not liking it. Anyway, let's get on to the rest of the video. All right, so here we are going first with a pretty mediocre hand, I'm not going to lie, but we're going to start off with a Vashada here, and the reason for this is because we are going to normal summon the Ash Blossom in order to go into a Halk. Yes, I know, Halk, Rodan, Yan, Yan, but we are going to do something rather interesting compared to what most people go for. Obviously, they go for the, like, the Danglong line and yada yada, uh, ignore this uh, called by, it happens. Um, but yeah, most people will go for things like the Danglong uh, with the, uh, their Aurora Dawn. We're going to do things slightly differently. Obviously, this is why we are also not playing the Jet Synchron. We don't want to discard cards. We want to keep as many cards as we can in hand. And uh, so, yeah, it just makes it a little bit easier because the Desk Bot can be uh, brought back right now. Uh, so we are going to go for the Aurora Dawn. We're going to go one, two, and three and bring back that Desk Bot. Then what we are going to do is we're going to link all three of these off into, or sorry, synchro all three of these off, off into a Yazi. We're then going to activate the Mecha Phantom Beast in order to pop the Yazi, um, and then activate the Yazi effect to summon out the Moye. Moye is then going to allow us to reveal the long one in order to grab a token, and this is basically what we wanted. Now we can go into a Chi Shao. Chi Shao effect is going to activate Chain Link 2. We are going to draw into a Taya, which is probably the best draw that we could have had. We end up searching up the uh, Sacred Summit here because we want to get the activation of our Taya as well. So we're going to go into our Long One here, and then we are going to uh, Synchro off into the Kishing Long One. We're going to activate the Long One to burn for 12, 
and then we are going to activate our sacred summon in order to go into Taya. Taya effect is going to activate. We're going to banish in order to, uh, or sorry, we're going to banish the sacred summon in order to level modulate, and then we can get another ten onto our side of the field. That's right, Baron de Flor is here as well. We're going to dump the the blackout to get an additional token generator so that this Vashada can potentially be online. So we have a monster negate, we have a monster banish as well as a spell trap banish, and we have an omni negate as well as imperm. Not the greatest, but with my opponent having three or sorry four five cards in hand after they draw this seems pretty decent they're gonna activate tenny uh or sorry tanky we're gonna banish that deal 1200 they're gonna normal summon it their kit they're gonna go for almirage and at this point i believe they realize that they can't really do anything because as soon as they commit to any monster uh either they special summon a Karos or they uh normal summon a another another one of their, or sorry, they can't actually normal summon another one of their tribe gates. So at this point, the game is basically over just due to the Sinister Sovereign. So they're actually going to send the Karos and then just immediately scoop it up. Good game. All right, and here we are going a second against Branded. Now, this just happens to be the pet deck that everyone has picked up. And look, I like the deck too, but dear Lanta, everyone seems to be playing it. They're going to activate their Polymerization in order to go for their Albion here in order to uh, get another Fusion Summon. I'm just going to Imperm this right here so that it stops them dead in their tracks. Uh, they're going to set one and pass. Now, we do have a fairly decent going second hand, but of course we drew the Deskbot 001 because I'm the greatest player of all time. We draw another long one, which makes things a little bit weird, um, but my opponent is going to immediately go for their Branded in Red, add back the All Boss, and then banish the All Boss as well as their monster on field to go for Mirror Jade. They are then going to activate, or sorry, we are then going to be able to link off into the Monk, and we are going to activate the, uh, the Heavenly Dragon Circle in our hand in order to get rid of that Monk, uh, which will then promptly be Ash, because of course, they have the Ash. At this point, I'm just going to end the turn, because if I commit to anything, it will just immediately get banished due to the Mirror Jade. So, no real point in doing that. They normally want to summon their Edgem Chain, and then search out their Edgem Chain, which turns off their Frightfur engine. So, I don't know why they did that, but, uh, okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> they pass the turn, and we don't die. We draw quite possibly the best normal summon that we could have, uh, although a Moye would have worked here as well. So we are going to activate our long one here, and we are going to go for the token. They are immediately going to banish their token, and I say that's fine, we are going to go for the Taya here. Taya effect is going to grab us another token, and while we have the token on our side of the field, we're going to go for the Heavenly Dragon Circle in order to add a Vishada to our hand to promptly deal with the Mirror Jade. This is one of the reasons why I think Sword Soul is in such a great position right now. It's due to the fact that they can just spin away the opponent's monster, that happens to wipe the board at the end phase. However, that doesn't really matter because we are going to kill them on this turn. We're going to banish our uh, Adhara to add back the Vashada just as additional follow-up and potentially as a discard if we need it. Anyway, we're going to go for the Chi Shao here and then we are going to dump the Ashana in order to uh, in order to get us into the rest of our combo. We are also going to banish the Blackout instead of searching a card because we really need that token. We're going to then activate our Ashana here in order to grab up our, um, our Adhara. The reason for this is because we have a 6 already on field, as well as getting that level 1 tuner allows us access to Yazi. We have not used Yazi thus far, so let's use it. We're going to burn them for 12, we're going to pop their monster, they're going to get their search, I don't really care because I'm pretty sure it's dead, unless they are running for some reason three of the edge imp monster which for some reason people tend to do um but yeah there you go we are then going to be able to special summon out our moye off of the yazi since it popped itself uh so now the moye is going to grab, grant us another token but we can then go into the baxia baxia is then going to allow us to pop the token in order to special summon back the taya to get exact uh, i think it's like 300 over or something like that 200 over lethal um so yeah there you go good game and here we are, this is a new duel, I promise, in the going second once again uh, against the Adventure Engine. Uh, this is what presumes to be the Adventure Hulk Dawn combo stuff, which honestly I think could be the best deck of the current format, just due to the fact that in best of ones, being able to set up a basically unbreakable board is kind of crazy, especially when a lot more people are siding out kind of siding out, quote-unquote, or not main decking a lot of hand traps at the moment. Anyway, my opponent is going to add themselves the Water Enchantress and pitch the Dark Ruler. Um, so, yeah, there you go. They're going to activate their Water Enchantress. I really don't know why they decided to not just pitch the Water Enchantress, but they didn't for some reason. Um, anyway, they're going to add it to their hand at the right of Aramisir. They're going to go for the right here, and then they are going to activate their uh, Ashana in order to go for the Adhara. They're then going to link off into Danglong, and Danglong is an absolutely crazy call 
card that generates absurd advantage. We need to stop this. Luckily, we have a singular hand trap that can do this. Now, they could still potentially go Halk, except for the fact that they have Worm Lock to themselves. So, this seems like a perfect opportunity to stop them in their tracks. Getting a counter trap onto their field seems detrimental to us. So yeah, we're just going to stop that in their tracks. We draw a Moye for turn as well, which is absolutely golden. I'm going to dust that back row because I, quite frankly, the adventure engine, just turning it off is very good. We're gonna special summon out our Ashana and then go into Monk and then go into Adahara and then go into Halka Fibrax. Halka Fibrax, Halka Fibrax will bring out the 001 and out comes the Aurorodon. Let's get that one, two, and three tokens and bring back the Despot 001. We're then going to go for the Yazi play, and since my opponent has a monster, we're then going to pop the opponent's monster. I decided to go for the Baxia here, or sorry, the Danglong here, so that we can actually deal with the monster that it ends up summoning off of it. Um, so yeah, we are going to then, uh, they're going to special summon a monster, we're going to special summon out our Taya, we're going to banish the Yazi, and then go into our Baxia here. Baxia, because it we utilized two different attributes, um, we are able to spin back two monsters, whereas normally if you do it with Moye, you only get to, to spin back one. We're going to send the Vishada here because Vishada can spin away the last monster, and then we get to normal summon the Moye, reveal the Ashana because of course we still have a monster in hand. We're going to go for the Chi Shao here, which will allow us to get into the long one, as well as draw a card. We draw Emergence, which is hilarious, um, but yeah, out comes the long one. We are going to special summon the monster, uh, and then go into the Qixing long one, reason being... I know that they don't have anything in hand, they, have, they haven't activated anything thus far, and at this point they probably would have already dropped the Nibiru if they ended up having it. So we're going to burn them for 12, we're going to activate our Baxia in order to bring back the um, the Adhara, and then we are going to go for the Chaofeng. We're then going to search up the Arch Nemesis and just proceed to battle. At this point we had well over lethal, so there's no really point in actually summoning the Protoss, might as well just keep it in hand just in case. All right, and here we are going first against basically the same deck that we just played. They're playing some Orcus cards, but that doesn't really matter. We're going to special summon out our Vishada and do the same thing that we did with the Ashana last time, uh, except this time we are going to make it with the Vishada. So out comes the Crystron Halka Fibrax, of course, yada yada. Yes, I know, it's boring, Aurora Dawn, cool, fantastic. But I think the Yazi play is rather interesting, and this doesn't end on like an Omni Negate indestructible board, and it's fairly unique. Uh, also, one thing that I really do like about this line in particular versus a lot of other lines is the variants that you can go for with this in particular. As you see here, we actually go for a Baron de Flore, so now we have an Omni Negate before we even commit to a Moye. Also, also, one thing that makes this rather interesting comparatively, it's still rather boring, um, but comparatively is the fact that uh, we still can end on a lot of follow-up, which makes it a lot better in general. You're not just ending on an unbreakable board and hoping that your opponent doesn't have anything because you have no follow-up. You still have a lot of various plays through the Sword Soul engine. This is why I think this deck is one of the best decks. I don't know if it's quite the best deck. I think ending on an unbreakable board in best of ones just is demoralizing enough to where a lot of people will just scoop, but I still think this is very fun. So we are going to normal summon the Moye and reveal the long one in order to go for our Chi Shao. We're going to activate the Chi Shao and, we, and the Moye. We're going to end up drawing a Maxi because I am a fair and balanced duelist and search out the Emergence. We're going to then go for the Mo, or for the Long One here and we are going to end on the Qixing Long One. We're going to end on the Baron. We're going to burn them for 12. We're going to go and search out our Protoss because, again, fair and balanced. And we have the... Uh, the uh, Yeah, anyway. <laughs> we have Spell and Trap Banish. We have a Monster Banish. We have a Omni Negate. We have... Locked them out of summoning darks, as well as just floodgating them. Um, we have a monster negate, uh, and we have a maximum C, because I am a fair and balanced duelist and happen to draw the max C. In their draw phase, I'm going to activate the max C because I've been kaijued too many times, and so I'm going to just activate that to get my free draw. At the very least, I will get something out of this. Out comes the Pankratops, and I'm going to allow that to happen. They're going to deal with our key, Kishing Long One. Dang, it doesn't do anything. That's fine. Hey, hey guess what? I drew the off of the one card off of the one card I drew, it was an Ash Blossom, because I'm a fair and balanced duelist. Uh, they're going to go for the one card Halka Fibrax with their Jet Synchron, and again, they're under Maxi, so we're going to draw a whole bunch of cards. It doesn't really matter what we draw here, because I still have a way too many forms of interaction here. My opponent is going to go for the Crystron Halka Fibrax, realize that they don't have a target, because they have already utilized both their Crusadia Arborea, their Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion, as well as their Jet Synchron. 
So they're gonna go link off into their union carrier, realize that the game is over, and concede. Good game. So, while I didn't get to really showcase the Qixing Long one all that much, it feels like once people see it on the field, there is a reaction to deal with it pretty promptly. Uh, or just scoop. Uh, this card is absolutely crazy. Being able to burn you, similar to the Tax Dragon, while also being able to deal with opponent's monsters, is very problematic. And overall, it does have some cases where it's better to go into this, especially if you are wormed lock with something like an Ashana, um, or just in general. It's still a very solid card, and against specific matchups where they need to have their cards on field, this can immediately deal with them. For example, something like a Numeron, if you just banish the Numeron network, what are they going to do? If you just banish one of their Numeron monsters, what are they going to do? There's a lot of interactions within specific decks that make this very strong. However, in best of ones, when you don't know what your opponent is going to be playing, this does lose a bit of power. Not knowing that your opponent is going to be playing something like, I don't know, for example, a uh, Tri Brigade where you can banish things like Tenki uh, or something that has a field spell like Invoker um, or what have you. This doesn't seem nearly as valuable. Of course, against like Salomon Great, it's going to be absolutely insane. But I don't know. I still think it's definitely worth it to make something like this, as well as a Baron, as well as a Chi Shao, over something like ending on a Chao Feng and potentially other forms of interaction. Having something like a uh, a Chinging and a Berserker may not be as good as ending on like a uh, a Qixing Long One and the Baron. Obviously, two level 10s should be better than a two level 8s, seeing as how they are more difficult to make, but alas, the point still stands. Overall, I do like the deck, and I do like the new style that this individual card provides. It's very cool, and uh, I'm excited to continue to play this deck. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys did indeed enjoy. If you did, a like is very much so appreciated, and if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh!, then just be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.